Once the hand is mechanically assembled, there are need to connect it electrically to an Arduino. And essentially, what you're going to do is you're going to solder each of the individual servo wires, the signal wires, to one of these pins down here. And you can find the numbers in the code. Before you get to that stage though, it's a good idea to do some tests to make sure that everything is working like you expect. Now, if you don't have an extra cable, let me start that again. So one of the advantages of the Arduino Mega is that it has four serial ports. And a serial port is how the microprocessor can talk with the outside world. And we like serial because it's very, very simple. There are extra wires, there are extra functions. You can turn on hardware control and all sorts of stuff, but I've never bothered. And I don't know anybody that does because the whole point of serial is it's just as simple as it gets and it works. So there are two kinds of chip which are available, which will convert USB, which is normal USB, into serial because the microprocessor runs at five volts and the computer is going to run at 12 volts because legacy serial is 12 volts or something around that. Frankly, there's a lot of variation. For short distances, serial just works. You're just pumping out bits and the other end is measuring them. So there's additional software protocols built in which will detect if a message has been corrupted. But from a hardware point of view, you just want to send signal. Now, in my original setup, I used a wireless connection. I used a Zigbee which went in on serial three. Additionally, I had radio control, a normal handset. Um, this kind of thing. And that went in on serial two. But for simplicity, when you come to this stage and you want to test, we just want to get serial going in on the normal USB. So I've changed the code. Hand 12B will now send the commands from the visual system over this one. In the original hand 12, you'd need to supply an additional connection, either wireless or wired, like these ones. And that would go in on, on serial three. But now we're just gonna do it on serial zero. So 12B is loaded up. And if we load our code in, We'll compile it. Done uploading. And that's it. The code is now in the Arduino. We can now fire up PyCharm. Make sure that our camera is plugged in on the USB-C. Camera's just sitting over there. And sometimes it gives a fault and sometimes it works. So this time it worked. So we are getting signal. Signal is being sent out over this COM port into that Arduino. Now, if you don't see these numbers appear, or what it's going to do, in fact, it will give you a COM error, and I can recreate that. If you come up to, which one is it? HandTrackerRenderer.py. In amongst the files, there's one called handtrackerrenderer.py. And this is where you specify right at the top, line 16, you're going to specify the COM port. So if I put 5 and then try to run demo, it's going to give you that error. It's going to say that it could not open COM port 5. So the question you're going to ask is, which COM port do I actually have? Now, with the Arduino software that you just programmed, it will tell you. Using COM4. COM4 on the computer is corresponding to serial zero. COM4 on the computer, serial zero, which is the USB. It's the default. And if you have a, if you have a program like Hyperterminal installed, when you click on that, it will also give you a choice. And here you can see 
COM4 is showing up, CH340. That's the name of a chipset, which is in the Arduino, and that's how it talks to the PC. Now, if you open that up, it's gonna fail. If you open up the serial monitor on this, it's going to fail because you only now have a single serial connection between the program and the Arduino. So now we know our Comport hand tracker renderer. We're gonna put this back to four. It now says four. Go to demo and run it. There we go. That has now opened COM port four. It's sending signal down to the Arduino. The Arduino is getting these numbers. And if you look very carefully, you can see they are changing with my hand position. It's not particularly easy to see. Now, if you want to double check where things are working as you think they are, and you have one of these types of cables, you can now plug them in. So there are two kinds. There is the FTDI, in fact, which is this one, FTDI, which is Future Technology Devices, it's been around for a long time, and there's this kind, which is the CH340. You're only interested in four wires, and the colours of the wires are always red for power, it's going to go to five volts, always black to ground, and then for the FTDI, which has six cables of which you are only using four, it's going to be yellow to RXD, which on the Arduino is pin 15. And that's pin 15 on the outside here. So you can just see the numbers. 15 is the outside, 14 is the inside. 14 is RX, 14 is TX, 15 is RX. So from your cable's perspective, you're gonna send the RX from the cable, and that's gonna be, um, the, you're gonna send TX from the cable. <laughs> This gets really complicated because it depends on which way you're looking at the system. From the Arduino's perspective, what it sends out TX goes to RX of the cable. Okay, so TX14 of the Arduino has to be received by yellow RX of the FTD. So that means you put the yellow to the inside and the orange to the outside. And if you're using a CH340 type cable, then it's going to be white on the inside and it's going to be green on the outside. You're going to have TX coming down from the computer. It's going to be RX by the Arduino. So for this cable, it'll be that way around. For me, this cable doesn't work. I think it's just broken. When I plug it into the PC, I don't get any noise, which you would like to hear. With this one, when you plug it in, you should hear the normal ba dump. And this, when we come and check, will now have added an extra port. This is port six. And at first you're gonna get gibberish. And that is because the standard serial port speed is 960. You want it set to 1,115, 115,200. And now you will see your data being pumped out. If I put my hand in the shot, we know the pipeline is working. So if you have your vision software installed, if you just put 12B into the Arduino and you connect up the wires like that, then you will see those numbers change. Now, there's another whole story about messing around in the Arduino and getting it all connected up, but at least this part of the pipeline will work. If you now connect your servos to the relevant pin, and you power the servos and you connect your grounds, because if the grounds aren't connected, there won't be any relative signal, then your servos are going to start moving and you can start to make the hand move. I will try and cover this much more comprehensively, much more detailed and in much easier manner to understand, but I just wanted to get a video out before the weekend because I know that at least one person is waiting to know how to do this. I've uploaded the code to GitHub. That should get you moving. And once you've got one moving, it's just a question, it's just a question. It's a question of tuning it. Go motor by motor, finger by finger, and you should, you should be able to get the whole hand moving.
I'll try and make a better video and show it fully, but that's how it goes for now.